name is Shane, and in this video, we are going to take a quick look at how to make dynamic forms inside of Bubble. So I'm going to start out with a few different groups I'm going to make here. So this will be oops, A. I'm actually just going to go ahead and um, give these borders. And then we'll make a, we'll just copy these groups here. I'm going to basically make five of them, I think, real quick. Right. So, well, I'm going to delete these real quick because the best way to do what I'm about to do. So, all of the groups, except for the first one, are going to be a little different. So, the first one is going to be a normal group. It doesn't really matter, but the one below it, I'm going to do. Actually, you know what? I can do all of them the same because it doesn't matter about the first one because the first one will always be the same. So I can display the information up here. I'm going to do visible on page load is no and collapse the height. And I'll just animate that. So essentially what we're going to use is a whole bunch of these groups that we can hide whenever we want to. So what we'll do here is this, this, this. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So let's do there, drop down. So we do a drop down, we do option one, option two. Okay. So this will be not visible on page load. We will define a condition when this one drop down A, when drop down A's value is. And the options we have available in here are option one and option two. Option one. Element is visible. Check. Okay. Now, same thing we're going to do here, but we're going to do it for option two. When drop down A's value is option. Two element is visible. All right. I also need a button down here to submit. Point we're gonna want to do that. Make the page a little bigger. Okay. So what I have availability to do here is I'm gonna add some stuff to show you. Um, Maybe if we do option one, all we see is this, and we just want their name and we want them to push submit. Maybe option two is we want their company name. Um, then after that, we need something else, right? So option one is just one box, and that's all we need. But option two requires a lot more. So we get the company name, and then we have a question. Um, so that question might be... Um, do, 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 do. A checkbox, right? So let's make this checkbox check if you are in an LLC. Okay. So if they're an LLC, they check that box. This is checkbox if you're an LLC. So in this one, it will be property. And it will be when the box is checked, we will display this element. Right, so if it's an LLC, this one's going to show up. Now, because of that, if we check that box, this box will show up. Um, maybe we want to know if they're an LLC. State you operate it. All right, then we want this submit there. Maybe if they don't check that box, we want something else to show up. So when check box, are you an LLC? Is it checked? This element is visible, but we want it to wait a second and see and 
what state you put what state you operate in is not empty we'll make this box visible so you'll type your name in there if you don't check that box you're gonna have a question um which would be maybe upload a picture right so additional oops this one is maybe it's not empty upload value okay so let's picture uploader a this one will be um, conditional only when uh, picture uploader a is um file size greater than zero okay and then element is visible, check. And we'll do an input here. Name of image. All right. This is just a completely ridiculous fictional form to show you different ways to make these boxes show up. So if I do this, this is what we're going to see. We have choose an option and the submit button. So I choose an option, enter your name. Okay. Option one, I do option two, enter company name. Value's not empty, something was supposed to show up. See, it works with this one though. So what state do you operate in? Maybe we operate in tennis. Cool. So I'm gonna figure out why nothing happened here. So here, this is supposed to show up when checkbox isn't checked and what state average value is not empty. Let's just get rid of that part so I'm just making it more complicated than it needs to be. And what was an operating value is not. So preview again. Preview. Option one, option two. Option two isn't giving us this box. We gotta figure out why this box won't show up. So, what state do you operate in? I don't know, let's just remove this condition. Let's do a new condition because uh, I don't really want to waste much time messing with why I can't figure out that one right now. But essentially, it doesn't matter. If it isn't checked, element is visible. Was that box checked? I have to go back and watch the recording. That could have been the problem. All right, we'll do preview here. And option two, company name. We're an LLC. Let's say job we're not an LLC. Upload a picture. Um, put a random picture here. There we go. There's a house, name of the image there. We can do submit. And when you do submit, you just have to create fields for all of these things. You would create a field for every type of option. And then you would want to just uh, save the type of option, right? So if I was going to do option one or option two at the top, I'd probably start with that as the type of option I'm going to display information for since it dictates the whole chain of events below it. I might even track if it's an LLC to display this information below. But this is a really simple way to go through and just make it so you're kind of creating a dynamic form. Because so what we started with is essentially next to nothing. Um, once they get into this, they don't show. So what I could do too is make it so that if if it's option one, these two don't show. What I mean by that is if when a means value is not um two right that was it when it is not option two visible is that okay let's see how this one worked so option two check and check so this there we go 
and then let's change it back to option one and one of them disappeared just like i needed it to back to option two um and that's just because of the workflow it says hey if you switch back to option one midway through all of this needs to go away because this one's showing up based on this this one's showing up based on this this one's showing up based on this but if you change this all of these other ones could change so like if i change this one this box here to have the same response then it would lose that one as well um but yeah uh, creating dynamic uh inputs uh dynamic ways of doing things pretty simple level when you can make a big giant flow chart of a form if you wanted to have it saved to a variety of things have it saved however you want it you could even set it so that if this box is full is filled out you can submit or you could have it set to like if you went with option one and, and the name box had data this is submittable um and that would just be in the conditions here so as example uh parents uh, do, 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 do not element not visible on page load would be good when enter names value is not or is not empty element is visible then you could also do um, when uh, name of image value is not empty element is visible. And what that'll give us then is this option one. Now you can submit. Uh, let's delete that real quick to show you how it would work if I was doing option two. Option two, name, not below an image. There we go. So pretty simple, um, pretty easy to do. That's how you can create a uh, dynamic form to fill out on bubble.